my copy before I had Athena do the uh, finishing touch. So I have put it into our packet, into our uh, SharePoint, but I, I don't know if that's shown up yet, Lynn, or not. Um, I can also put it on my screen and share it, but well, no, I'm sorry, I can't actually. <laughs> what, are, what are you? Oh, just open? send it to me and I'll share it. George, what are you referring to as a document? This is the agenda for today, and the agenda that's in the packet um, doesn't have all the uh, phone numbers and uh, the link, and um, it should. Otherwise, the agenda is fine. It has everything on it that you need, but it doesn't have. Mm -hmm. uh, Athena puts that in, and I failed to put that copy in. I put the old one in. So I just want to make sure that for the recording, it's shown on the screen. Yeah. And I did put it in the package just now. Um, Let so me see if I can find it. Yeah. So there should be two committee, GOL And I sent it to you. Okay, okay thanks. Yeah. You might have to refresh your... Uh, yeah, I don't want to do that because I understand have everything else lined up. So I'm waiting for Athena's thing. Okay. I think the internet's just slow at this time of the morning because everybody's logging on. Yeah. yeah, my my connection is just I have to I've been trying and trying to upload it. Okay. Um, so I show no attendees, um, and I don't think that's going to change. But um, okay, I've got it. There you go. Okay. It's now been officially shown on the screen. Okay. Thank you. All right. Back to the agenda. And I think, Lynn, you get us started, correct? That's right. Good. So whenever you're ready. So can you see the agenda? I can. All right. Um, so I'm going to call the meeting to order, and the first thing we're going to do is discuss the duties of the chair and the vice chair. And I think we should start, since we have several people here who are experienced chairs, but start with George about reviewing what the duties are. Okay. Um, you can hear me, I take it? Yes. Good. Um, I'm used to having to push the space bar, but it looks like at the moment I'm okay. Um, I started to make up a list. I'm sorry, of we, should, we should, I'm sorry to interrupt, George. We should he confirm that everybody can hear and be heard before uh, we begin. Okay, so then okay. if you want so to do, do that. Um, so we're going to officially call the GOL meeting to order. Uh, present, please uh, say that you are present by unmuting your mic and saying so. Mandy Jo Haneke. Present. Okay, Lynn Griesmer is present. George Ryan. Present. Uh, Pat DeAngelis. Present. Andy Steinberg. Present. Okay, and we have Nancy Murphy working with us today, taking minutes. And Athena's back up, but I'm producing for George, although I'm a member of the committee. All right, so everybody's present. George, please continue. So, um, I apologize for not having a document, but I just, just sat down yesterday and missed all the other things. And um, obviously the first thing GOL chair does is prepare the agenda for the meeting to make sure the agenda is in the hands of the uh, clerk, along with packet materials, uh, at least 48 hours in advance of the meeting. And now given the uh, COVID crisis, actually even more than 48 hours in advance is really ideal. Um, Chair creates a folder on SharePoint uh, at least 48 hours in advance of the meeting in which all the materials, or hopefully most of the materials are present for the meeting um, along with the agenda. And um, the chair reviews the minutes of each meeting and puts them in SharePoint uh, for review by the committee. And the custom of GOL has been then for at the uh, subsequent meeting uh, to approve those by consensus. 
um, but they are in your packet and they're in your packet today um, to go over. Um, once the minutes are approved, the, ch the chairs make sure that these are posted publicly working with the clerk. Um, the chair provides or maintains timely communication with the council president and the town manager and the council clerk on any and all matters relevant to the work of the committee. And finally, the chair manages, I don't know what word to use, uh, tries to manage um, the, the work of the committee, um, making sure that uh, duties are shared out equitably and runs a, uh, you know, efficient and hopefully timely meeting. Um, I think we also face some other issues related to bylaws that we are hopefully will discuss a little today, but I was reluctant to put those into this document that I was trying to create um, because I'm not quite sure where we stand on, on the process. Um, but um, that's what I have. I have those seven items, um, but I'd love to hear from the others as to what I'm missing and what should be added um, or what should be taken out. Pat, let's go with you. Unmute. Wrong thing. There you go. <laughs> I'm all ready to go on to the next part. I have nothing to add um, to his <laughs> list. I would like to nominate George Ryan as chair. <laughs> <laughs> there any other to... contributions to this discussion of the responsibilities of the chair? Please. That's not very helpful, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I have one point of clarification. Please. And I don't know if Athena is listening, but this came up with uh, TSO. Um, so you, we have the, the draft minutes from your meeting. Do you review them and make track changes? Um, you asking Athena? No, yeah. you, George. Oh, me. Um, I should. Um, and I think that was a point made uh, very well by Darcy Etia. So I think that's what you're referring to. Um, I, I don't make many changes, uh, rarely make any changes. And then I uh, forward that it goes to the committee in the packet. But uh, as track changes. Well, that's what I need to be, be better at. Um, right. I just need to make sure I do that. Um, yeah. Because in the past, I don't think I've been, I just, I see a typo, um, you know, I'll change it. Um, but every change I make should be track changed. And so that's something right. I need to do in the future. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. So yeah. any other conversation about the role of the chair, role of vice chair? Who is vice chair of GOL? Evan? It was Evan. Okay. Um, all right. Then with that, uh, let's go on to nominations for the chair. And Pat, you said you wanted to start that. Yes. I nominate George Ryan to continue as chair. Nice. Okay. Yay. George, do you second, do you accept the nomination? Uh, I guess I do, yeah. Okay. Is there any, any other people who would like to nominate themselves or be nominated or would like to nominate someone else? All right, seeing none, then we will do a roll call vote this time in alphabetical order. Let me see if I can remember my alphabet. Uh, Pat DeAngelis. Uh, yes. Uh, Mandy Jo Haneke. I vote for George. Okay, and Griesmer is a yes, and Ryan? I guess so. <laughs> and Steinberg? Yes. All right, it's unanimous, George. You can yeah. take over and yeah. now you need to get a vice chair. All right, um, I have a short speech I need to make, is that correct? <laughs> yes, please do. We need to elect a vice chair um, and uh, open the floor for nominations for vice chair. I, I nominate Pat. I second. second. Okay, George, you, you're running this part of the meeting. All right, so um, we have a, a nom any other nominations for our, our vice president? We have a nomination of Pat DeAngelis and it's been seconded. Um, any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, um, does the candidate wish to make a statement? No. <laughs> Kennedy does not wish to make a statement. Okay. <laughs> um, then I think we can proceed directly to vote. Um, and hopefully I'll try to do this in alphabetical order, um, but I don't think I can. Um, that means we start with the, uh, the candidate, actually. Um, Pat, how do you vote? Uh, okay. Pat says yes. Okay. Um, Andy? Uh, Pat. All right. Um, I guess uh, I'm next, is that right? Um, 
No, Lynn, I'm sorry, Lynn, I skipped you. My apologies, Lynn. I didn't, G, yeah. I didn't get G before H last time either. Uh, yes, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. Andy? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So again, it's unanimous, 5-0. Um, and Pat DeAngelis is going to be vice chair. Is this where I turn my duties over now to the vice chair? Isn't that, can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to be deathly ill. <laughs> I don't feel well, as a matter of fact. So. All right. All right, well, we have a full agenda in front of us. We have uh, two new members. Uh, welcome to uh, you all. And my screen, um, we have the agenda on the screen. Thank you. Um, and I, I was going to go directly to establish the meeting schedule um, to see if everyone is comfortable with the process, the schedule we have at the moment. So um, the GOL schedule, again, is unfortunately not in your packet, so that doesn't really help you, I'm afraid. Um, but we have been customarily meeting um, on the off council uh, weeks. Um, and so our next meeting is scheduled for uh, May 6th. Um, and we've been meeting at 1030 in the morning. So I wanted to get a sense from the committee whether that day, time, and frequency of meeting is at the moment satisfactory if you want to change that. Since we have two new members, um, they perhaps should weigh in as to both the day and the time. I'm fine with that. Okay, Lynn is okay. Andy, thoughts about meeting schedule? I'm fine with continuing with the current schedule. Okay. Um, the other members of the committee, you've had changes to your lives, obviously. Um, is 1030 Wednesday morning still working for you at the moment? It works. It works for me. Okay. It, it works for me. I just wanted to mention that we tend to meet on the same Wednesday as a Monday council meeting That's if right. it works out, but instead of That's the off right. ones, but things You're are so right. crazy that there's yeah. a published schedule somewhere. No, there is. And I can, I will put that in the packet. I'll make a note of that. So especially, and I can send it directly to the two new members. Um, so you can see it, but um, uh, okay. So it sounds like, and the other issue is frequency of meeting. Now this has come up at TSO and perhaps we should talk about it briefly. Um, we've been meeting basically every two weeks, essentially. Um, and there's been some thought or pressure uh, from some to make that every three weeks. Argument, first of all, being that it eases some of the pressure on staff right now. Um, I don't know if people have any thoughts on that um, or whether we want to talk about it some other time, but um, frequency, any thoughts? George, I have a clarifying question because we are we meeting the same week as the council meets or alternate? Because the fourth is a council meeting. Um, and then we would be kind of continuing with that. I yeah, think. Um, Mandy made the point correctly that it's actually we're meeting on the weeks of the council. So okay. um, that has okay. been the tradition. Um, so Monday is a council meeting and then Wednesday is the fine. Meeting. That's fine. And that is the way the schedule is set up for the moment. Okay. Yeah, it's my mistake. So to the extent that one of the um, goals of the committee and responsibilities of the committee is to review the um, matters that may be coming before the committee to um, comment on whether they meet the three standards, does it work well to have it that close or would it be better to have more space between the meeting to give you more time to write reports? Well, Andy, I've found that um, because uh, we're meeting after a council meeting, um, it gives the chair more than enough time to prepare reports. So that was kind of the logic of what we arranged. Um, so when we're meeting on a Wednesday and council is the following Monday, it's a little bit, it's not by any means impossible, but it's a little bit more challenging to do it that way. I certainly can do it that way if the uh, committee feels that that's more productive and more uh, appropriate. But uh, in the past, um, the movement to the same week as the council gives the chair a good period of time to get a report ready um, before the council meeting. 
Okay, so I, I thank you for that explanation. Then the other point that I'll raise flows from that, which is um, switching to every three weeks. If the council's meeting every other week, kind of defeats the purpose of that aspect yeah. of the committee's work. Yeah, it would. Um, but on the other hand, it might lessen the load of counselors, and depending on what GOL is doing, and also might lessen a little bit of the load on town staff. And the chair won't die if if he or she has to prepare a report over the weekend. Um, I know Mandy's done that many times. Evan's done that. Many of you've done that. So it, it's hardly, I think, a um, uh, you know reason that that rules out everything else. So um, I'll put it out there for people to think about. Uh, Lynn. Yeah, I can't seem to raise my hand like we're supposed to. I well, think I, can see, I, I, can I made you a co-host, Lynn, and yeah, that's why you don't right. have to raise hand. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this. That's fine. Um, a couple thoughts. First of all, I think we could always go ahead and schedule the meetings, and then if we don't need them, take them off the calendar. Right. Uh, and we should know that we don't need them by the time we post them. A second mm -hmm. thing is, and this was raised yesterday at TSO, and that is at what point do we hope to be able to return to the council meeting every other week? And I have to say, as I said yesterday, I certainly enjoyed having last on Monday night off. Yes. Uh, so I would like to get to that point if we can. Uh, the third thing is remember the town council calendar shifts because of holidays. And so I think you want to say after every regular meeting. Uh, and I think that that would be important. And finally, the other piece that may come to this committee fairly rapidly is requests for some bylaw changes yeah. or amendments based yeah. on what the business community is looking for as we try to reopen Amherst. Okay. Okay. All right. So what I'm hearing is that for the moment, we're going to stay with the schedule that we have, um, but we do have some flexibility and we're going to stay with the Wednesdays at 1030. Um, so that is that. Um, we have a proclamation in front of us, Juneteenth proclamation. Uh, if we could put that up on the screen. There actually are two uh, copies in the packet. And um, someone needs to remind me who the sponsor of this is. I don't know. That would be me. Mandy, thank you. And Mandy, do you want to take us through it then briefly? And uh, Hold on, I'm just trying to get my so, screen. All right, no rush. Um, our task here, I'm sorry, is to determine whether this is clear, consistent, and actionable. And uh, so that's what we need to do. The assumption is that everyone's had a chance to at least look at it once. So I opened, so I had a new one that I'm not uh -oh. sure is the one that is, yeah. Okay. Both of these are so, dated 2019. Yeah, no, I, I sent one up that was 2020. So let me... I, I will Hold on. I have it and okay. share my screen with that. Um, okay. So just so give you, me. I have the other one up, but didn't know. That Do you have the 2019 or the 2020 one up? I have the, that's a very good question. So, so there is a 2021, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, so people can see that. So, so this is the 2020 one that I have modified. Um, okay, so we haven't seen it. All right. So you should you should be able to see it now. Basically, I'm just going to go through what I did. Um, basically, most of what I did was add whereas clauses to conform to what the prior GOL committee sort of reached on a consensus on proclamations and stuff, which was one sentence per whereas clause. And so I fixed that in the 2019 to the 2020 version of just creating new whereas clauses or modifying it into one sentence. Um, so that's why it looks like there's a lot of changes, but that's a lot of what was done. And then I actually modified the last whereas and the now therefore clauses. Um, I added a whereas to indicate that we have in Amherst residents have been organizing Juneteenth celebrations because we try to make sure every Juneteenth proclamation kind of 
where every proclamation relates somehow back to Amherst and what Amherst is doing. So that last whereas clause was what I could come up with. Um, and then the now therefore, um, I modified because we normally ring bells and have a celebration on the town common and that didn't seem like it might, I wasn't sure whether it would happen or not this year and whether there will actually be something. So I cut it down a little bit to just do the bells. I thought, well, maybe bells can still ring even if we're social distancing and all. Um, but I added the words if practical to the end of that <laughs> so that it's, it's hedged. Um, and then I changed the, the last GOL in the past has, has made all of these just the not this like set our hand toward two thing we just write voted this blank day of whatever so i changed that that ending and that's that's pretty much all i did good okay all right um so we have the document in front of us um it's been vetted before by uh, gol but mandy's just gone through the specific changes she made and it sounds like she made no other changes of any kind to the wording um, does anyone, I can give you a moment if you'd like to go through it, um, or we can move to uh, approving it. Um, what's the sense of the committee? George. I'm sorry? Um, I move to Thanks. recommend that we forward this to the council. Okay. However, how do you make your motions in GOL? Uh, the way we make the motion is that GOL um, uh, moves that this proclamation, which is the Juneteenth proclamation, the, um, how do we put it? We, we uh, declare it clear, consistent, declare and clear, actionable. Consistent, thank you. Thank we you. Clear, <laughs> okay, that's my motion. motion. Okay, Lynn has, has made the motion that this proclamation be declared uh, clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second. Pat has seconded it. Um, any further discussion? I see none. All right, then let's move to a vote. And again, we have to do it by roll call. So uh, we'll start with uh, Pat. Uh, yes. And then Lynn. Yes. And then Mandy. Yes. And then the chair um, votes yes. And Andy. Yes. All right. So the vote is five zero. It's unanimous. Um, this doc, uh, proclamation is declared clear, consistent, actionable, and we'll forward it to the council. Um, the next item on the agenda is uh, an item six. I'd like to actually hold that for a second um, and talk for a moment about item seven and then come back to six, if you don't mind. Um, okay, hold on. Sure. Go, there's your seven. Okay. So um, it was pointed out to me that uh, by Evan that um, with the change in our charge, um, we are now responsible for um, reviewing and making a recommendation for non-voting members of the Finance Committee. And we have, in fact, a member of the committee whose term is up, and I do not know at the moment whether uh, this member is going to continue or not, but whether they are going to continue or not, it actually falls to us to, uh, to begin that process. And uh, so we need to take a few moments and think about how we want to do that. Um, I put in the packet both the, uh, so there's a process of course that OCA has developed and uses for a ZPA and planning board. It's still being refined, but it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty firm in most of its particulars. And um, in my reading of our charge, this is the only appointment that really would require uh, the kind of process uh, that uh, OCA has followed uh, with ZBA and Planning Board. The other appointments are so rare, um, would, I think we'd have to deal with them you know, on, uh, at, you know, at the moment, although I, I, that's certainly open to uh, uh, discussion, to say the least. But in the short term, um, we need to act on this. And the first step would be to post a vacancy notice, and, um, which is what I'd like to do, and second step would be then for us to agree on a process of how we're gonna go about this. And I put in the packet um, both the original OCA process, and then I put a uh, draft version of what uh, I would suggest we might adopt. 
Um, we may also decide we don't need something so elaborate. Uh, it's really a wide open question. We can use any process we like, as far as I understand it. Um, the fact that Oak has already done this and that it's used it, I think is a strong case for at least looking at their process. So um, short term, we need, I just wanna remind everybody, because I was reminded that we actually have to do this. Um, and Evan's thought was the sooner you start the process, the better. Um, and so uh, I wanted to talk with you about that, um, both get your approval um, and at, ask, answer any questions or get some clarification, and then maybe think for a few minutes about the actual process that we will follow. Uh, one question I have, which may have a very simple answer, and that'd be great, is do we actually have to do interviews? Maybe the answer is yes, of course we have to do interviews. I'm not sure we do, but I, that, I just need that clarified. But that's part of the OCA process is the elaborate interview process. Um, given the nature of this particular appointment, um, I wonder if interviews are required. Um, certainly vacancy notice, certainly CAFs. Um, I assume we want some, you know, but so we need to decide. We need to decide what kind of process um, is appropriate and um, we need to start that process. Thoughts, questions, comments on this item, which is item number seven. Um, we got some hands up. Uh, anybody have their hand up? Let me see. We have Andy. Let's start with Andy. Sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll go first. And the, um, unless Pat wants is burning to want to go first. Uh, there were two things that I thought about. One is that uh, I'm getting some bouncing around of what I have on my screen. Uh, one of the things is that when we um, passed at the council level, um, the current um, charge that was uh, um, adopted to have the three members, there was a provision that was put in there on my motion that the council would revisit the question of having um, how, how the process has worked to, to have non-voting resident members and that uh, we would uh, have some sort of evaluation before making an additional appointment. Since that was in the motion, um, this may be a question that also needs to go to Lynn as president is what, how to go about handling that. Um, and I'm gonna actually go a little bit farther and say that um, I think there were legitimate concerns in the part of the um, committee when um, it first came about because we didn't know how it was gonna function to, when you have non-voting um, members who are non-council members. Um, I have perceived to, to work very well. Um, and I think that if the committee was polled, which we have not done, um, that would be the uh, likely result. So um, we do have to at least acknowledge that that was part of the motion way back when this was uh, first launched. Uh, and the second thing is, is that uh, if we have more candidates than the one position we're going to have available to a point. I don't know how we can not have interviews mm -hmm. in order to treat the candidates fairly if the only if there's only a single applicant, which we won't know until we advertise for positions. Uh, I think there might be a bad precedent to not do an interview simply because uh, what what would we do if um, it just is somebody who just doesn't feel right? Um, if you don't have a process to interview, you can't then have an interview, all of a sudden set up an interview process because it's somebody who, who we just don't think would fit in or would be appropriate for the role. So I... Uh, Good, okay. Uh, Pat. Actually, Andy covered my, I was going to talk about the process, the council revisiting 
and wanted to ask him about how it was functioning. It seems to me that it's been going very well. So I don't have anything to add. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to lower your hand, Pat. Lynn, I can't figure out how to do that because I don't have it on my screen right now. Wait, let me see. If I can lower it for you. Wait, okay. I, can, I got it. I got it. Thank oh, you. you got it already for me. Thank you. Lynn. Um, so I, uh, as, as a member of finance committee, first of all, feel that it's gone very well. I think there are times that uh, adding to Andy's knowledge, uh, having some previous finance committee members has been useful. I would also say that um, as we enter what is going to, without question, be the trickiest financial um, period um, of our of our tenant ten, our tenure as counselors and probably even most other tenures um, it it's going to be interesting to see how that group manages through this with us because uh, but I, it doesn't mean I think we should stop it it just means that um, I do think it's is appropriate to have this evaluative conversation. If you would like finance to do it, we can do that. If you have the council do it, we can do it. But frankly, I don't think most people in the council are that aware of the interactions of the people who are um, resident advisory people. Um, so my overall opinion is let's go with it. Let's collect the names, um, make sure that the person who is um, presently in that term, uh, whether or not they want to continue. I'm not even sure if I know who it is. Mary Lou. So we do have to consider at least the rest of the CAFs. So um, I see Mandy's hand. Mandy, please. Yeah. So um, I, I think we should try and follow the OCA process because you guys worked so hard coming up with it and it seems to be working. So I, I support going that way. Um, if we, you know, the motion originally to put non-voting members on did have that requirement. So I would support that discussion happening, um, but maybe do it simultaneous with advertising for CAFs and advertising the potential vacancy with, with something that says the we're doing it simultaneously. So some sort of caution on that. Um, it would obviously be up to either Lynn or Andy on how to go about having that conversation. Um, I, I'm going to put my my two cents in on maybe just put it on a council agenda for a discussion item. Um, I, the only people I'm assuming that will really weigh in are those that have served on the finance committee and know what's happened to have that happen at a finance committee and then come back to the council for a discussion seems a little duplicative um, instead of just having it all at the council discussion. But it, it sounds like we did have a motion that required that discussion to happen at the council level. So we should do that discussion. Maybe if we do that on May 4th um, at that meeting, we can still be advertising before that or ready to advertise after that for the vacancy. And I, I think did, did part of the OCA process require the chair to reach out to the person who currently sits there to encourage yeah. them to apply? That's so, you know, I, I would encourage George to do that too. Okay, that's, that's what, we, yeah, okay. Um, so, well, yeah, one other thing, go uh, ahead. Andy, it's too late to put it on the agenda for Thursday, right? For finance? Finance committee agenda. No, it's not. It could be uh, item yes, unanticipated. You know, we could just do unanticipated. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think that I think the point's been made very well that and that this did require that it be reviewed by finance and that that the council at least be apprised of what finance thinks. Um, and so I think that's something we should do. Um, Evans thought to me was that the sooner you get started, the better, just given um, the the time constraints. Um, so if, if finance could look at it quickly and then make it a decision and that could then be reported to the council. Um, and I could also start the process um, with a caution, perhaps. I'm, I'm a little nervous about putting cautions in 
um, but I could. I mean, I, there's, it makes in a way it makes sense, but I don't want to scare people away. Um, and if things don't work out, we just tell them, well, <laughs> the position no longer exists. So, <laughs> just, um, so it sounds like what I'm being told is, A, I will contact, uh, it's Mary Lou Talman. I'll contact her and see if she is interested in continuing. Um, I will reach out to, um, uh, to, to the, uh, the, the town manager's office and, and get uh, all CAFs that, and there couldn't be many, but whatever CAFs there are, that have uh, put this down as a possibility. Um, we sometimes make the point that individual counselors or members of a committee can spread the word. Um, if, in other words, uh, recruitment, um, just letting people know that this is, is something that's coming down. Um, but um, um, so that's, it sounds like we wanna move ahead. You want me to reach out to Mary Lou? You want me to begin the process of, of a vacancy notice? Okay. And Andy has his hand raised. Andy, go ahead, please. Yeah, there's one other um, group of people that we need to think about, which gets back to the CAF forms. Last year, there were a number of people who applied, who were interviewed. Um, I believe that it was Darcy who did interviews on behalf of the committee, but I may be wrong on that. That's right. Reported back to the committee. Um, but, uh, you know, the um, we do need to um, decide, are we going back to people who were previously interviewed and ask them if they still maintain an interest? Yes, um, the custom for uh, OCA is to go back at least two years, I think two years at the moment, uh, that may get changed. But um, in this case, two years wouldn't, I don't think wouldn't be appropriate. It hasn't been, the office hasn't been in existence that long. But um, yes, we would go back um, at least at the two year mark or whatever. And anyone who has expressed an interest, whether interviewed or not, would be contacted. Um, and then obviously any new uh, CAFs would be included. Um, yeah. Interviews though, I, I, I wanna push that just a bit. I, I, I'm not sure it's gonna go anywhere, which is fine. But um, I find a statement of interest. In other words, asking people to submit some kind of written statement of interest of you know, why they are applying and, and what they bring to the body. Um, strikes me as more than sufficient. Um, and, uh, but the custom has been to do the interviews um, and that's what Oak has done. Um, we don't have to, I don't think we have to do interviews, but again, maybe I'm missing something here. Is there something about open meeting? I mean, it's just, um, what we need is just the sufficient information to make a reasoned judgment. And um, also understand with interviews, um, that's going to be a special meeting of this committee. Um, and uh, it's, there's a lot of uh, bells and whistles that go with it. It's fine. Um, we do it with planning board. We do with CBA. Um, I'm just wondering if it's appropriate for this body, or maybe the answer is for any kind of appointment like this where the town council is involved, interviews are pretty much just, you know, de rigueur. They have to be done. Um, so it's still a question I have in my mind. Any other, it sounds like what I'm hearing from most of you, if not all of you is we do interviews and that's what we're gonna do. Mandy Jo has her hand up. Hey, Mandy, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I'm not set on interviews. I, I, I think this, I haven't actually attended any for planning board or ZBA at this point. Um, so I don't know how they go in the time frame. Um, I know it, I've heard frustrations with no follow-up questions and the questions are very limited and all. Um, and so if, if that's the way we're going to do these for a position that is actually non-voting, um, and that, that is a slight difference than planning board and ZBA, this is a non-voting position on a non-regulatory body, um, on our own body instead of a, a completely different body. Um, I, I think I could forego an interview in exchange for some sort of additional statement of interest or written answers to questions. Um, the CAF, I don't think, gives enough information given how people fill it out for us to not do something in addition to that. Um, that could be interviews, but I'd, I'd be open for um, a one-page statement of interest or a written answers to questions. Maybe we still go through with questions so that we get some 
more indication based on what finance is looking for or things like that that's a little more in depth and not just a statement of interest but but i'd be open for something other than interviews as long as it's something more than just the caf right 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 yes now um andy has his hand up andy, please go ahead uh, yeah i appreciated that last comment uh one of the things that uh is very important is we want to see that people who um, are applying and are being considered have something of value to offer to the committee in the way of prior experience with financial matters um, in the public sector and with the town of Amherst and uh, or what other qualifications equivalent to that that they're offering to the committee. And uh, the uh, grouping that we ended up with this time, uh, I think was probably what, um, from what I recall, swayed the recommendations from the uh, member who, of the committee who interviewed. And um, one person, was not a prior member of the finance committee in its old format, um, but had a lot of experience in public finance. And uh, the other two had been on the uh, finance committee in the town of Amherst before in its prior format. That was information that was valuable to have and um, for making the decision that they were the appropriate people to designate or at least appropriate people. Actually, there were other people who had been on the Finance Committee who applied and were not recommended, but for other reasons, I gather. Uh, so it is a, um, whatever we do, whether it be with questions or with an interview, needs to be able to apply out that kind of information in order to make the judgment. Lynn. Yeah, um, it's interesting as I think about the period of time we're entering financially, there are some people who may say, you know, I really don't want to take this on. And then there's other people who might say, boy, this could be an interesting period and I think I have something to offer. The fact that we only have one two year, and I believe it's a two year position open, we yes. do need to keep in mind that this isn't a person that we would then appoint that would go beyond our present terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and my sense would be before we say interview or no interview, we need to see what the pool is like, because if we don't do interviews and we have a pool of two or more people, and if should we then decide to choose the person that's already on, it almost looks fixed. Mm-hmm. Okay. What I'm going to suggest, I'm, I'm trying to keep my eye on the, you can also raise your hand, but I do have the chat window open so I can see hands that are up. So don't be shy about interrupting or, or raising your hand. But um, I'm going to suggest that um, the document is in your packet. And uh, I don't think it's time wise well spent for us to go through it now. Um, it's, as Manny pointed out, it's been a process that's been used a lot, but it does raise, I think, some questions for us in particular, given this particular appointment. Um, so I'm gonna suggest that everyone take some time between now and the next meeting. It'll be on the agenda, obviously, for us to see if we can agree on the broad outlines of a process using the OCA process as our model, and maybe further thoughts on interviews versus non-interviews. Um, I will begin at least starting the process um, and we will also be wait to hear from finance about how they decide um, but I think we do need to make a decision fairly soon as a committee as to the process we're going to follow um, so when we finally do get to uh, further down the line we'll know what we're going to do there's selection criteria that need to be determined or selection guidance the process um, does ask that uh, the chair of the committee be consulted, and that information is included. Um, and this information is then shared with the candidates. Um, and if you do interviews, they get all this prior to the interview. Um, so 
it's a good process, it's a thorough process, and we may decide, when you look at it, you may decide this is really what we want to do. There may be some tweaks. Maybe we can do without interviews, um, but I'd like us to try and decide this at our next meeting. After people had a chance to look at it and think about it, it'll be a, 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 an important piece of, of the agenda for next time. Any questions about that process? I mean, I've just kind of briefly outlined it for you. So you have the vacancy notice, you have the CAFs. We have to determine sufficiency of pool according to the process. Um, if there is only one candidate uh, and there's only one position, is that, are we satisfied with that? Are we okay with that? Um, we could decide we are, but we there usually is a, a point where you decide is the pool sufficient? Um, I would think one candidate for one slot is really not a sufficient pool. So, but we have to make that decision. Um, we have to create selection guidance. We've already done some of that already, but that's something we have to do. And then if we are going to go to interview, we have to create interview questions. We have to decide about how the interview will proceed. Um, I don't see why, if we do do interviews, I'm not, I don't see why we can't have a back and forth, right? Um, there were reasons why there was no back and forth for ZPA and planning. Um, here, it seems maybe a back and forth would be perfectly appropriate if we do do interviews. Um, so again, that's an, a decision we have to make. Um, and then of course the recommendation. So it's all in your packet. Um, I created one for GOL. Uh, there's also the OCA process, but essentially what I did is, you know, I made a little bit of wordsmithing, but pretty much took out OCA and put in GOL. <laughs> uh, so it's not a particularly elaborate change, but um, as far as I can see, the only uh, position that this would be relevant for us would be non-voting members of finance. But again, you might wanna look at the charge and look at the other um, positions that we do have to make a recommendation on. Um, my sense just personally was that I didn't see a process issue there. Um, whereas the, here there clearly is a process issue. But maybe looking upon it, you when you look at the charge, you may say, well, wait a minute, town clerk or town manager, right? We, don't we have to have a process for this? My feeling is when these occur, if they occur, then we deal with it spending our time now trying to come up with a process for some hypothetical appointment. Um, I don't think it's a good use of our time. But again, that's something for us to discuss. Okay. Any other thoughts? All right. Um, then I want to go back to item six. Um, status of bylaws for future consideration. And um, these are the infamous three piles. <laughs> I was talking about even yesterday in TSO. Uh, came up. Um, Evan was uh, did a great service in dividing up, um, broadly speaking, the uh, the referrals that were sent to this committee re regarding bylaws, um, and um, that's where it sat. Unfortunately, over the last couple of weeks, for a number of reasons, I'm going to blame pandemic. <laughs> Seems like a convenient excuse, um, but your chair was supposed to do some things. He's been busy. Um, doing dealing with some other things, but um, we have in the packet um, the, the the list of uh, referrals, uh, courtesy of Evan, and priority one, priority two, priority three, and what was agreed uh, at the last meeting, before uh, we have right, was that priority one could largely be handled by the chair, in consultation with the committee. It's mostly um, housekeeping and. Uh, maybe sending some things along to be uh, reviewed by attorneys and so forth. Um, the chair struggled with some of this still, um, but anyway, the thought was party one could be dealt with largely by the chair. Um, and then party two and three are things that at some point we need to decide as a committee how we're going to proceed. Um, and there, I think there is a process question. Um, and um, perhaps could benefit a little bit from what CRC did um, TSO got uh, the CRC document that outlined a process for how to begin to think about um, issues in general. And, and I think TSO is going to make use of that. I think it's very helpful. I, we are going to make use of it. We're going to uh, try to put it to work. It could also be used here, perhaps, um, as we try to think, you know, how do we deal with these, these bylaws? Um, do we just sit, the five of us, and, and just talk about them in a sort of amorphous way? Do we assign them to uh, at least the ones that have more substance and more challenges to them? Do we farm them out um, to individual members of the committee to sort of prepare and then present to the committee as a whole? Um, 
that's something I was attracted to, but then I looked at the composition of our committee and we have the chair of CRC, the chair of finance, the vice president of the council, the president of the council. And these are three people who uh, have a lot on their plate. Um, so I'm not convinced that maybe that is the wisest strategy here. Um, so maybe there's more of a role for the chair and or the vice chair, but, um, and you have some notes. So you have the document in front of you. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it. Um, I've made very little progress with it over the last few weeks for a number of reasons, um, but I was assigned essentially to try and work my way through priority one. Um, and I just have questions. I mean, with bylaws in general, I spoke to Paul um, and he's ready. He said, I said, Paul, really, can you, this sort of thing, are you ready to get some of this stuff from me? Because it would be legal review questions mostly. And he said, fine. So he said, when you've got it, send it. So he's uh, didn't, I was hoping he'd say, don't bother me for the next six months. But <laughs> he said, you know, so there's legal review is a question, I think. Uh, and Paul's feeling is that pretty much everything should get legal review. So there's the whole question of process for us, uh, sort of like CRC's question in general, what, what are we actually doing with these bylaws, right? What, what is it that the committee is, is, is trying to accomplish? And clearly one part of that is the legal review process. Um, at some point we need to send these to Paul, to the attorney, and then it comes back to us. And we had this issue uh, with the most recent uh, uh, bylaw where the attorney's uh, comments and changes, uh, we couldn't understand some of them. We, we were sort of in the dark. And so one of the things that at the last meeting of GOL, it was made clear that um, when we do go back to Paul for further legal review of, of, of bylaws, that we ask him to convey to the attorney or attorneys that they come with some a little bit more elaboration, a little bit more explanation for the changes they're making, um, because otherwise we're left to guess. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment. I think there's a process question um, and um, also a question of legal review and what the committee feels is appropriate or not. Um, the town manager's feeling is just about everything. I should go back at some point. So I had to learn more time and that process. So thoughts, questions? Lynn. So uh, first of all, I want to also recognize that Pat was on the bylaw review committee. Right and gives, um, frankly, I'm probably the one least comfortable with rewording of bylaws. Um, but I'm willing to partner with somebody to take a pass at some of these. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other question I have is, given the present situation with COVID, are there some of these that might be more important to get done than others because of either reopening or because of the situation we find ourselves in. And so those are just two things to add to the discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other thoughts? Pat? Pat, you're muted. You need to unmute Pat. Yeah, I find I figured out how to raise my hand, so now I, <laughs> right. I, I would enjoy work, uh, the opportunity to work with Lynn on rewriting some of these. I'm looking at them, reviewing them. I mean, we have also just to add to the mix. We have uh, three counselors who have three bylaws that they've asked us to look at and to make recommendation on. Um, and um, there was a time stamp on that. I'm sure it's long past, but I know Mandy had one, uh, Kathy had one, and Darcy had one. Uh, Mandy's, I believe, is with the noise ordinance. Um, Mandy's, uh, I'm sorry, Mandy's with the noise ordinance. Uh, uh, Kathy's was with the condo conversions, That's as right. I recall. That's right. And um, Darcy's was with uh, the plastic bags. And um, the plastic bag, um, bylaws are in the packet, but um, your chair is somewhat at a loss as to what he's supposed to do with it. 
And so I need some advice, counsel, help. Um, you know, I would assume that, that someone has a proposed bylaw like Darcy with uh, plastic use, flag, right, reuse, whatever. It comes to us for, right, clear, consistent, and actionable. Uh, we now also have the opportunity to comment on, to offer some thoughts on the content as well, according to our charge. But it may also go elsewhere. Um, shouldn't we be looking at something only after it's been vetted by other committees? Because we're supposed to be looking at it in the form that it's then going to go to the attorney and have the attorney look at it. So again, there's just simple process questions that I, you know, in my simple-minded way, are just not clear on. Um, I have two documents for you to look at. Um, from one is from Darcy. One of them, perhaps, is the original. But anyway, and also I assume that with the bylaw, there comes a sponsor. I mean, somebody who wants to, right? And so I know Darcy has certainly expressed an interest in, in you know, when are you going to take this up? And you know, I should be involved or should be able to speak on it. So again, just process questions, things like that. So with Mandy's, with Darcy's and, and, and Kathy's, um, they have individual, in a sense, sponsors or individual people who want at some point something to happen with these. So, and then there's just this pile of stuff that, that I've shown you and that, right, that we need to wade our way through. And to my knowledge, none of them have any particular sponsors. Um, they're just, things that we need to kind of work our way through. Um, help me here or just thoughts. So I see Mandy has her hand up. Mandy, please. I'm going to try and address a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Thank you. First thing on open meeting law, if two people agree to work together to do that, they have to post the meeting. So I would recommend that we assign a specific bylaws if we're going to go that route to one person only and that person can choose or not to consult others as they want while working on that before they bring them back. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I'd be happy to take some. Um, you know, I, I think this list is good. We might want to start. I, the list doesn't tell, doesn't remind me what we were being asked to look at for each one. So I have to go back to that document and see that. Um, yeah. But maybe we start by saying either what might be important with getting us restarted or, um, you know, just start going through this list. Start priority one, assign two to each person to determine either what the changes would be or that it needs sent off with changes to an attorney or it needs to go to another committee. And then at each meeting at GOL, we, we make those recommendations or decisions by vote. Um, I would personally recommend for the three that the counselors wanted changed before we did this, that we deal yes. with those maybe first because they were specific to counselors yes. and as just a courtesy to the counselors. Um, Darcy's I think is a clear, consistent and actionable issue. Um, so I would keep that in this committee with that discussion going there. Mine is probably more of a TSO issue because it was removing certain language of the bylaw on what would be, um, what would be a violation of a bylaw. So that's actually more substantive that I would think should go to TSO first mm -hmm. for that potential discussion instead of that substantive discussion here. Kathy's, um, Kathy's is quite substantive, but I have no idea where it would go. Um, she pretty much wanted to keep the whole condo original bylaw in this one and there was a deletion of the whole thing um, or a very large modification and she'd want to modify it back. That one was all sorts of, nuts. so maybe bring Kathy in to talk to us about what the goal is to, and then we can determine whether it should be sent off to another committee or whether that's more appropriate in our committee. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It That might actually be more appropriate in CRC thinking about land use, but I have no idea at this point okay. without really seeing what she was doing. But I think maybe we tackle those three first with decisions on whether it's gonna get handled here or in a different committee. Okay, okay. Um, let me start with yours, Mandy, for a second. I see Andy's hand up, so let me stop. Andy, go ahead, please. Uh, 
I'll be very quick because I think we're going in the right direction with the discussion. Uh, the um, the priority of uh, saying that there's a counselor sponsor, I think, is a good one, but there's a whole list. And I wonder if at some point the list should be made available to the council and the council and, and if there's counselors who uh, want to make the case that a particular um, uh, bylaw is important for consideration, whether we should um, consider that request um, because the council isn't aware of um, this list. I didn't know it existed until I got the packet for this meeting. The other thing that um, I observed in looking at the two versions that were in the packet of the uh, bylaw that uh, Darcy is proposing changing for the plastic bags, I was having trouble figuring out what the changes were. Yes. And um, I think that it's really important that there either be by um, having a markup version that shows the changes uh, explicitly or an accompanying memo that ex uh, does so. The, um, if we're talking about amending a current bylaw, it would be really helpful to know what the changes are and even the, uh, a statement of why. I agree. Um, and obviously what you have in your packet doesn't tell you that. And um, I guess I'm looking for some guidance, which is perhaps a bit simple-minded on my part, but uh, it seems to me what I need to do is reach out to, to Darcy and uh, have her uh, provide us with exactly that so that we can then uh, set about the task of clear, consistent, and actionable. Um, that would be my uh, thought that I should, that would be, and I put that on the agenda for next time, um, but without the appropriate document with the clear sense of what's being changed and what isn't, um, and I don't know. And when I'm looking at those two documents like you, Andy, I don't know. So I would reach out to the sponsor and ask her to, to um, do that. And once we had that, we could then proceed. Um, Pat. Unmute, Pat. Damn it. Um, <laughs> mute, mute, Pat. I, <laughs> watch it. I'll get to the F word really fast. <laughs> then we're all uh, in trouble. <laughs> uh, if you're looking at both of them, I don't know. Um, what I thought was that we are trying to reduce purposes. The, um, and so that we're looking at a reduction to the final um, paragraph the primary purpose of this bylaw is to reduce. So we're getting rid of all the World Economics Report financing and stuff like that. And then it seems the other change is she wants to add compostable bag, which is different than a biodegradable bag. Um, and so those are the, the changes that are, that, ex that everything else is the same. Okay. So Pat, do you feel that we have enough information in front of us to proceed uh, to the question of clear, consistent, and actionable? And then, the next, and then the next step would be, my understanding again, a process, the next step would be for us to send it to the lawyers. I don't wanna send anything to Paul and to the lawyers until we are satisfied that this is what we think it's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, I understand that. Right. I, I, I guess what I have trouble with is this is a bylaw that has already existed and in the format and it's been reviewed um, by the yeah by the law firm by KP law in order to make it and we've so it's already been reviewed and I feel like what we're changing is very minor we're not changing the use of the regulations or anything like that here we're talking about purpose of the bylaw and we're talking about um, adding a definition. So I don't see why that has to go again before the law, the KP law, and particularly given the time frames that they work with. Um, this yeah. feels different. It's not a new bylaw. It's not a complete revision or trans, uh, uh, transformation of a bylaw. Okay, I see Mandy and then Lynn. 
So, yeah, so the difference between the two is the one that does not have the long, the, the one that starts with A purpose instead of A findings and has four definitions instead of five is the current bylaw um, that is in the, that we passed when we passed the big rewrite um, and the, mm -hmm. the rescind and replace. The one that has the findings paragraph that's much longer and the extra definition is Darcy's proposed change. She wants to add the definition and add the longer sort of purpose paragraph because um, she was not in support of the shortening of the purpose paragraph that happened between the one that was in place and the one we passed in the rescind and replace. So the original one that town meeting passed had even more definitions, had a larger set of whereas clauses or purpose or a full page of that and she has shortened that but she did not like the full shortening so that's why i say it's more of a clear consistency and action ability i think the bylaw review committee determined that the large one was not necessary and was not in keeping with what their goal was in bylaws um, but darcy wanted it put back in so i think our recommendation our discussion is on whether we recommend enlarging which would then require adding that definition in or whether we recommend keeping the bylaw as is either way i don't think it needs to go to an attorney okay okay lynn so i have a question to start with i believe the rest of this list came to us from the bylaw review committee yes am i yes. correct yes. okay so and it was referred to GOL for us to figure out what to do with it. Right, and right. And so having said that, let me just go on. I wanted to make sure I remembered that correctly. So it seems to me that it would be appropriate to ask each of the three people to meet with the committee, um, maybe not all in the same meeting, but to meet with the committee, discuss the changes they want, and then we can either decide to keep it in the committee or send it off to another committee um but give each of the counselors the um benefit yeah. of that meeting so i mean if we want to start with darcy or whatever although i do find it interesting right now since we're not using plastic bags um or at least not very many uh we're certainly not using reusables um so that's one one option another option is another thing to point out is i i'm not clear that every bylaw needs a council sponsor unless our rules say that because basically this big list in front of us that's been prioritized right. has already come to us from a council review that's right and the, the real issue is what do we as GOL want to do with them? Right, right. And I mean, so I mean, I can always take them back to the council and say, please check off one, which do you think are most important and two, which you'd like to be sponsors for. But is that what we really need or do we, can we do that as a committee? So I think we can do that as a committee. That was the whole point of the bylaw review saying these we didn't get to um, yeah. and GOL and for it being referred to a committee because I think bylaw review wasn't sure any one person would want to work on any of these and be the formal sponsor. Um, so right. the committee would be the sponsor is what it would be instead of an individual counselor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so let me see if I can Again, speak up, please. But I'd like to just summarize what we have come to, if I can. Um, it still seems that the priority one um, is something that the chair should be able to work through and, and be able to make recommendations to the committee. And if the chair has a problem with any particular item, he can also, he can reach out for help. Um, but priority two and three um, could benefit from the committee looking at them and seeing if any of them are things they might like to, um, what, study, look into. Um, 
I think we do need to start. I, I'm speaking for myself. First of all, I need to start moving this forward. And part of that is my job with party one. Um, and second thing I'm hearing is that with the individual counselors, um, Lynn would like all of them to have the opportunity to come and speak to us. Um, I think that makes sense with Kathy. With Darcy, I'm hearing that, that actually we have what she wants to do. And I wonder if at the next meeting, we should simply go through that and decide, right, whether it's clear, consistent, actionable. Do we want her present for that discussion? Um, we certainly could ask her to be present. Um, do we want to have her come first and then do the uh, clear, consistent, actionable? I'm a little unclear as to what to do with that. Um, it sounds like that one's ready to really for prime time because um, she's made her changes and uh, it's now up to us to look at that and make a recommendation. Lynn. I think it's courteous to ask her. If she'd like to be present for the yes. discussion and the committee's yes. okay with having the sponsor there um, in the sense that, I mean, that's kind of what I think we envisioned for some of this. Right. that things could be clarified, certainly with proclamations, declarations, and so on. The dream was the person would be there, and if there was an issue, we could address it right then and there. So, okay. Fine. So, if we do if we do Darcy and Mandy Joe next time we meet, we don't right. have to call it a committee of the whole. No, we don't. But I have a and question for Mandy. I'm sorry. Kathy, another, a different time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a question for Mandy, but um, and Mandy's got her hand up, and so does Andy. So, Mandy, first of all, um your comment i was going to get rid of one from priority two list okay and what, so 3.44 tax increment financing um mm -hmm. the wage theft package that is now currently in front of tso includes essentially a a similar thing that um the wage theft sponsors are seeking to essentially um repeal 3.44 and replace with one of the bylaws that they proposed. So I think that should be on well down below the list because it might be dealt with through TSO anyway. Which one is this? I'm sorry. Uh, 3.44 tax increment financing. Uh, Andy. I'm sorry, Mandy. Mandy, were you finished? I'm sorry. Yes, I am. Okay. Sorry. Um, Andy. So I guess the question that I was uh, thinking about, and, I, and it really goes back to all of you who have experience on this committee, to answer the question is, how do you decide what um, goes into the committee discussion to clear, consistent, and actionable, and what goes, uh, just gets referred to the council? Uh, the um, idea of having a definition of um, what is a uh, biodegradable bag um, is one part, but also the actual definition, um, where did it come from and are such bags um, available? Does it, in, in what purpose does it serve to, um, are, are questions that need to be asked how do you decide whether that falls within this committee's realm or should be deferred to council discussion? I'm willing to, I see Mandy's hand still up. I don't know if she's, um, but, um, and Andy's hand of course is just right. I find that that line is impossible to, to draw with any um, certainty. And I've kind of resigned myself to that. And in my reports, as in my last report, I tried to distinguish the more, you know, clear, consistent, actionable part from um, comments about the merits or substance of the issue. And um, I guess my feeling personally, just alone speaking myself, is that we can't keep that out completely. And I'm not sure we should even try. But in, at least in reporting to the council, we should try to distinguish between um, the issue of clear, consistent, actionable and matters where we, we had thoughts about the merits, problems, issues, concerns, and that would be separate in the report um, is the best I could come up with. Um, I don't know if that's 
satisfactory, but that's the best I could do. I, I just don't see how we can, uh, with any of these issues or many of them, avoid getting into some areas of substance. And insofar as we do, we just need to, to separate that out. And assuming we vote and we come to an agreement about that area, it would be reported as such. Um, if we don't, then it just becomes a discussion we have and it never gets in the report because we never actually uh, made any kind of formal decision. Um, I don't know if that helps Andy, but that's the way I've handled it so far where it's clearly we were also straying into the area of, of comment on the merits. And um, this is with the uh, percent for our bylaw issue. Um, that's how I dealt with it. Mandy, I had a question for you quickly. Um, you were thinking that your item might just go to TSO. Um, so I'm wondering if you do want to be, uh, have a place on the agenda, which is fine, uh, to present your case, or whether you want to wait and decide where you want, what you want to do. Um, uh, clearly Darcy, I think we can certainly put on the agenda and she would be notified. Do, would you like also to be on the agenda next time? Um, what's your thought on that? Um, I mean, I can be on the agenda. It, it, it depends on whether this committee wants to discuss whether um, certain lawn equipment or the, what, whether the definition of noise or excessive noise needs to include certain lawn, lawn equipment or not. Um, but that mm -hmm. to me seems a more appropriate discussion for TSO than here. And so to me, that would be a recommendation coming out of TSO I, I'd be okay with if this committee took this referral of mine and essentially transferred it to TSO. That okay. would be fine with me. Okay. So that would be an item for discussion next time. A, um, a vote to transfer. Exactly. Or whatever, but yes. Yeah. Okay. So you would like to be on the agenda as well with that. Um, my thought with, uh, I see Pat's hand up. Pat? Um, I'm re I've been reflecting on Andy's uh, question about where did the definitions come from, and it seems to me that within a written bylaw, the definitions that you um, that are listed are the definitions that the town are using, and it may be that when a sponsor is presenting a bylaw or um, replacement language that they need to um, say this definition of compostable comes from uh, to establish some kind of authority for that definition, but to have it listed it's in the bylaw would be um, not, it, I think it would not be helpful or it just would be time consuming for somebody re to read it. Okay. Um, and uh, Andy. Yeah, just to uh, follow up on Pat says, I, I think that what I was really getting at is uh, if uh, somebody, just, and, I, and I don't think Darcy would have done this, by the way, but if somebody just made up a definition and uh, there are no biodegradable bags available um, that meet the definition, uh, that's something that the council ought to know. And um, so having just some ability to ask the question, where did you get the definition from and are bags readily available um, is helpful information at some point, either for the committee or the council. And that's why I was asking that question. All right, well, I'm gonna make um, a suggestion um, and see what you all think. Um, in terms of going forward. Um, we'll review before we're done today um, what uh, the, the next agenda is looking like it will be. But I'm thinking of some larger issue of this document from Evan. And if I would ask you all to, between now and the next meeting, take a few minutes and go through it. Um, Mandy's already caught one item, 3.44. She may catch others, you may catch others. Um, in terms of uh, anything, A, that you'd be interested in, uh, just your thoughts on these items. Uh, and the answer may be none. You may go look through it and go, you know, I have no thoughts on this whatsoever. But the chair does need uh, some input and guidance from uh, his colleagues as to priority two and priority three. 
I'd like you to look through the whole document, but I consider my responsibility priority one, um, and I need to act on that over the next week or two. Um, and so if you would take some time on the agenda would be going through this uh, with your comments, thoughts, um, if any, and then making some decisions about specifically how we're going to proceed. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to invite, we will have Mandy, uh, obviously, and we'll deal with her um, bylaw, um, which we may, uh, we'll discuss. Um, I will invite Darcy to come and be present for discussion of her bylaw. Um, and we also have the issue of the appointment process um, that I'd like you to think about. Um, again, another document that if you could look at um, and have your thoughts on what you think is appropriate or not. Um, that's my thinking at the moment um, for going forward. Any thoughts on that? Concerns, questions? No way, don't wanna do it. Um, so I'm giving you a little bit of homework, but just, just general sort of overview. Um, and obviously I have a lot of things to do with priority one. Okay. Um, item eight quickly, um, I think, sorry for a moment. Um, is the clerk of the council still with us? Or is she? Uh, I'm here. I feel Hold on, I'm working on it. Um, this is just a question. It, it came up, uh, and I think we can deal with it fairly quickly, and I think Athena might have some thoughts on it. Um, a, a resident raised an issue about uh, track changes for rules of procedure. In other words, sort of keeping some kind of track of the changes that we make. And I think Athena had some good thoughts on that, but I thought it should be discussed by us um, to what degree we think this is even uh, feasible, let alone appropriate. Um, uh, the most important thing is the rules of procedure be up to date, which is what uh, the clerk of the council does a very good job at. Um, do we also need to have some kind of sort of historical document that shows changes um, and over time? I'm not sure that's needed, but uh, we had a resident raise that issue and uh, it came to the clerk of the council. Um, and so it, uh, item number eight, do we need track changes or some kind of index for rules of procedure so someone in the future um, can go back and see, I don't know why they but if they wanted to, they could go back and see what changes have been made. Um, so Athena, did you have a thought? I think you had responded to that um, and maybe you put an end to the issue, but um, is that ringing any bells? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yep, I do remember that conversation. I, um, I emailed her back with instructions about how to find records of the changes. So in the rules, when I post them, we have the, the dates that changes were made. So it takes a little legwork to research what changes were made on which date but if you look at the the dates that revisions were made to the rules and then go back into the council packets for those dates then you'll see the the votes or you could look at the unofficial records of votes and see what changes were made according to the date um, so she was looking for an easier way of finding those things um, and that's what i suggested the the committee let me know if you want me to do that in a different way right good so I guess that's a question for the committee to what degree um, they would like to a have this for themselves or feel it's appropriate for the public to have or whether the current process, which is a bit cumbersome, but not impossible, is certainly adequate. And if people do have a question, the clerk of the council can simply direct them and say, this is what you do. Mandy, any thoughts? Um. I, I do not vote for an index. Um, we looked at that early on as, as GOL about, I don't know, almost a little less than a year ago, it was referred to GOL because the rules committee was not able to get to an index. Um, and we looked and that would have been hard to create, hard to decide what uh, words to choose to put in an index. So as an index, I'm gonna put my two cents into, I don't support that. Um, track changes within the document itself are just gonna get cumbersome. But what I've seen in the past things happen is instead of tracking exactly the changes, um, that there's a one pager before or after um, the, the 
I guess the table of contents that says, you know, that would list each of the dates as we're listing in the rules themselves. We now have dates that were like amended on and then there's like 12 dates right now. Each date mm -hmm. could be listed and then it could just say um, rule whatever, you know, um, amendments per date and then it could say the specific rule that was amended without necessarily the change so that people could easily go, oh, I'm wondering what they did with that rule. Then they know exactly which date in the council minutes to look at or in the council vote to look at instead of having to look at each one. And that might not be too hard for um, the clerk to um, add in, um, for Athena to add into the document um, or us as we do the amendments for GOL to just, you know, list, what was our last one? May, April 11th or whatever, rule 10 point whatever K, mm -hmm. you know, right. something like that, that, that doesn't go in too much detail, but isn't that hard to do and might still be helpful. Okay. Pat. You're so soft-spoken, Pat. Pat, you need to un unmute. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I knew um, we'd get there eventually. <laughs> I, I know. Um, I did so it I on to clear this meeting. I did it <laughs> anyway. Athena, I'm trying to figure out from you. It, it seems to me I don't think the work is necessary. I guess mm -hmm. I'm. I feel like the public can do a little research, um, and and so it seems like extra work. And so I'm interested in your response to how much work it would be to either do Mandy Joe's version or any version of this kind of uh, record keeping. It would be extra steps. So right now the way we, oh, Lynn has her hand up as well. Right now what I do after changes are made to the rules of procedure um, is I post a notice on the bulletin board and there is a short description, but that's not included in the rules themselves. So mm -hmm. it would be an ad ad additional step. Okay, Lynn. I think this is a dangerous precedent to set. Mm -hmm. It means that any document that we change and change and change mm -hmm. is gonna start looking like, you know, an edited document of somebody's doctoral dissertation. Mm -hmm process mm -hmm. it it again as long as all of the versions are there there's minutes to accompany those mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i really feel like this is a demand that we just can't meet okay um uh, andy yeah i th i agree that we shouldn't go down this path uh, if we go there then we're going to have to get into the questions with bylaws too uh, do we have a responsibility to create legislative history and make a track record of legislative history? Uh, we're not the legislature and we're the council. And I don't know that we should jump into um, setting that precedent without a lot of thought. And uh, it really ought to be um, possibly a much a broader discussion than a single committee. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts? What I'm hearing here is, I'm sorry, so uh, Mandy. I just wanted to quickly say, um, this might just be an issue for this one, so I support everything but, that Lynn and Andy said. Most councils and most legislatures, when they adopt rules, adopt them every session. So every two years, a new set gets adopted or formally supported, which means in two years from now, there's probably going to be a completely new adoption um, and then they won't get changed as much because they'll probably just readopt whatever's current at that time mm -hmm. and you know it'll it'll be a different thing so this legislative history might not actually matter as we get mm -hmm. to further and further sort of elected councils if that's the way this council goes with an adoption for of rules for that legislative sort of elected body um, and when new elected members come in and the whole body is sworn in again, they might readopt a whole new set of rules. Good. Okay. What I'm, what I'm hearing here, and I'm open to, obviously, if you disagree, speak up, but um, there's a sense that, A, the, the clerk of the council handled this perfectly appropriately, and there's, there's procedures that are the way steps you can take to get this information, and that's what was done. 
and there's no need to add yet more work to her workload. Um, and every two years, these will probably be, um, the history will be completely um, gone anyway. So I'm going to, I wanted to discuss it. I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, Athena's contribution as well. I think we can leave this then, um, unless I hear otherwise. Um, we discussed it and we feel that the current situation is adequate. Um, so good, thank you. Um, public comment uh, may come a shock to the new members, but there uh, is no public present. So uh, there will be no public comment. Um, and if there were, then I would read this long statement, but I'm not going to. Um, we have the minutes in front of us in your packet. I do try to make sure that the minutes for each meeting are available to you before the meeting for you to look at. And so I'm assuming that you've had a chance to look at them. And any, uh, I see Andy's hand up. I did notice some things in the minutes, such as, uh, of course, it's, uh, uh, I wasn't a member of the committee at the time, but um, I'll, I need to go, uh, trying to get over to where my, on my own copy, so I can just uh, tell you what they were uh, that I noticed. Uh, at the very bottom of page one, uh, I think the word you meant in, is uh, protect and not protest the town. Um, very okay, bottom of page one, create installation. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you. The other um, one that I was a little bit uh, confused on wording was, um, as I read through it, under number seven at the bottom, of, um, towards the bottom of page three. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like it was not, but it could be worded. Uh, Ryan stated the opinion uh, that if committees uh, will be uh, reviewed with uh, liaisons, it should be done by GOL and then sent to the council with suggestions. Um, and suggestions, I think it was a spelling error there. Right, there are a couple of typos. Yes. Yeah. Right. So uh, there was a little bit of a wording in that sentence that just didn't it didn't read well when I read it, and so I um, was playing around with it a little bit. So those were the two observations. Okay. All right. All right. Um, anyone else? Um, so what we look for here are changes to the minutes, um, and what. Um, I'm seeing is a problem with the wording at uh, under item seven and um, a typo in at the end of page one. Um, any other changes? And I'm not sure what I can do with seven. Um, my dim recollection is that, um, and I believe we did agree to do this, if I'm not mistaken, right? That that GOL will, um, at the end of each year, um, take a look at non-voting liaisons. And um, so we did agree that there should be an annual review and that GOL should do it. Um, and that we would make a change to rules of procedure, which we did. Am I correct there? No. Yes. So I, I, I see Andy's point, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna make any changes to that. It's it's yeah. you know, um and there is a typo. Any any substantive concerns or changes with the I'm sorry? Oh that's background noise. Yeah. No, Maybe that's, Joe that's has my her background hand. noise because Rebecca's talking too. That's sorry. Right. Um okay. yeah. no, in, in seven, I think if you just add the words after add the words priority list after the word if so it reads Ryan stated the opinion if priority list will be reviewed and, and right. add the ED and, and then and then you're fine you're talking about the priority list and okay. um, yeah so okay. all right fair enough 
Any other uh, concerns, changes, observations about the minutes? I see no hands. I see no hands and any, okay. So uh, with those two amendments, with those two changes, um, can we adopt these by consensus? And then I would uh, send them, I will forward them to the uh, clerk of the council. Please. Okay, all right. Um, if I can find my future agenda items. Um, I've already given you a sort of a preview of coming attractions but I'd like to hear from any of you as to items that you feel um, should be on the future agenda. So I've asked you to, what I've suggested is we'll have both a spot for Mandy's uh, bylaw and uh, invite uh, Darcy as well. Um, I'd like us to review the uh, process for um, appointments for non-voting members of finance. Uh, so that document, and I'd like us to uh, spend some time on the, uh, the three piles. Um, Lynn. Yeah, so uh, this really comes from um, being at the TSO meeting yesterday. I was, yep. I was the producer. <laughs> um, the one is, um, do we need to make a change to our uh, rules of procedure that talk about appointments from the town manager for department heads and for town committees being automatic referrals to TSO. It's already been done. Okay, great, thank you. And then the other one that came up, and this may not be an automatic referral, but they now are the long-term public ways uh, group. And um, let me just use an example. So the discussion came up about whether or not there will, will be a proposal from the farmer's market about reopening at some point this spring. We don't know. I mean, it, it's right now we don't have one, but would that be an automatic referral to TSO? Would it come to the council first? How do you see that being handled? Mm -hmm. Mandy? Um, so not everything gets automatic referrals. Um, we did it with a lot of appointments just to speed stuff up. Something like a farmer's market might be substantive enough that maybe it needs a discussion in the council before referring. Um, or, or simply because some of those stuff might not need to go to a committee before being voted on as this, this council is done. So I, we can discuss it. Um, okay. As to whether to add I, it. I'm inclined to agree item. with you. As you may remember, when we did some of the Spring Street stuff, we didn't bother to refer to a committee. On the other hand, the longer term hit is issue of the handicap space on and Spring Street is still before TSO. Um, and I felt like it's possible the farmers uh, market thing could come up pretty fast. And frankly, the council may meet before the TSO does. I mean, I, I guess I would say if the committee wants to discuss a potential change to put automatic referrals of that in, we could, but I, I, I'm not necessarily in favor of that. Um, I think the rules work as they are for that right now. And I'm bringing it before this group because we now have rules of procedure as part of our charge for GOL. Right. Right. That's all I needed. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Um, Mandy, your hand up again? No. Um, yeah, no, no, I, 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 I'm working on it. So uh, we had at one point talked about consent agenda being added to the rules. Yes. Um, yes I think we right. should go back to that um, to yes. make sure that we can add that in so that it, we've got a place in the agenda for it to go. We've, we've been muddy, muddling along um, in doing it, but I think it would be good to have it in the rules. Mm -hmm. Good. That something actually was on my list as well. I think quickly the question for me is, um, how does that conversation get shaped? Um, I had gone off and you know done my research and came up with something off the internet um, that seemed perfectly. But I'm not sure that's even necessary. Maybe it's a fairly simple uh, process that you're, you're thinking of. So, Lynn, what's what's the thought here with consent? I think agenda? if you go to the motion sheets. 
you'll see how Athena has been framing consent agenda right. and there was some work done on those. I would just take it right out of there. Mm -hmm. And we would then put this in the rules of procedure so that, I mean, it just help me it, with the- um, It defines what right. goes on a consent agenda as being items that are thought to be non-controversial. And right. then it goes on to talk about how if any one uh, counselor does not right. want that okay. kept on the agenda, we take it off. It, it's, it basically is the rule right. we've been following and it works. So I just take it off of there. So, Good. yeah, I think we would need two amendments. Um, if you're thinking about next meeting, I could probably draft them up. One is to the actual agenda order, because I think we would want to add a consent agenda item into the agenda order. Um, and then a, a rule on, as Lynn just said, the what consent agenda, what goes on a consent agenda or the reasons and how that operates. But I think those Good. are the two. So you'd add, be adding like an actual rule and then you'd be amending the agenda order. Good. And Mandy, if you do that, it'd be great. So if you could do that, and if you can, you can send it back to me, but um, two amendments. And it is was on my list. Thank you, Lynn. Um, and and I, consent agenda, what yeah. we've been doing is just taking the consent agenda as the first action item. Would you right, change right. that, Mandy Jo? Um, yes. Most agendas have it as a specific item on the agenda list, generally before proclamations before anything that would get voted on is the right. consent agenda so that if right. anything's pulled off, it goes, you haven't finished that item yet. Okay. Good. So I'm going to add that to the um, agenda for next time. Um, and very good. Any other items that people are, have, they would like to be considered? We've got already, a looks like an interesting agenda for next time, but any other items? All right. Um, I have nothing. Uh, there's no item for non anticipated by the chair. So I'm ready uh, to call this meeting to a close. Um, unless and when are we ready. meeting next? We next meet on May 6th at 1030 in the morning. Great. And um, you've got your homework. Um, and so Thank you all, um, but I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned at what I have about 1214. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you all. Take care. Stay well.